let's kick this into high gear because I don't want to make you guys wait any longer because I think I've hyped up our special guest so much. <laughs> last night she sent Especially me Especially since I wasn't here email. last time. <laughs> <laughs> last night she sent me a, an email being like, I'm in Costa Rica, it's beautiful and humble brag and the internet went down and I'm not going to be able to make it. And I was like, I, people are going to come for me. It's fine, we'll figure it out. And then like, I see that email and then like, Two emails later, I see she's like, just kidding, internet's back. And I was like, I think she just did that on purpose. You're forgiven. <laughs> um, so Vivica Von Rosen, I'm so excited to bring you guys today. She's the co-founder of Ingresso, the largest provider of full spectrum, modern digital sales transformation solutions. Um, she is known, seriously, as the LinkedIn expert. She even has it in her, um, what is it, uh, URL oh, on LinkedIn. Yeah. Oh, URL. Yeah. 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 She's the, she's the best-selling author of LinkedIn Marketing, An Hour a Day, LinkedIn 101, How to Rock Your Personal Brand. Um, she's been named in Forbes, four years running, as top social media expert and a regular contributor um, and has been featured in Forbes, BuzzFeed, CNN, Entrepreneur, Selling Powder, and the Social Media Examiner. Come on, guys. <laughs> so hyped up for her. And uh, her business mission is to help sales professionals and business owners. That's all you fine folks. So excited. Mm -hmm. You guys are so, can you feel how excited I am that Vivica's here? Um, create more quality and qualified conversations on LinkedIn. Vivica, welcome. Thank you for joining the community session. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, 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 feel we all think this, but could I just have a little bit of your energy? That would be awesome. <laughs> right? Hey, no, no, no. You, you out energize me every time. I think it's because I'm I caffeinated. So your turn. <laughs> well, you are, you are just awesome. So I am apparently sharing the wrong screen here. Here we go. All right, so yeah, today I want to talk a little bit. So again, thank you. Hello, everybody. I actually see some familiar faces from the first time I was actually able to make this. Apologies for the last time, unforeseen circumstances, but I was really, really glad I could make it today because I would have been, I don't know, I was going to go down to like, I was going to go down to a cafe, turn my camera off and just, I was like, I was going to make this happen one way or the other. So I'm very happy to be in my home office though, that, that, that helps. Um, so yeah, today I want to talk about how to create real relationships on LinkedIn. I'm going to keep, if you see me looking over here, so I just want to keep an eye on the, uh, on the chat and cool Lloyd, where were you born in Costa Rica? Except for you're Port on mute, just chat. Oh, there we go. Port Le Mans, Port Le Mans in the industrial part of the country. It is, it's a fabulous, I mean, it's a, obviously, it's a fabulous country. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be living here right now and putting up <laughs> monkeys eating the fiber cable. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh yeah, uh, monkeys. I hate when monkeys, monkeys hang out with the me. Howler yeah, monkeys, they damn ate it. Through the fiber cable line, that's what happened. Or it was one of the local electronic trucks cleaning up the power lines. I don't know, one or the other, I'm gonna go with monkeys. But what I wanna talk about today is how to create real relationships on LinkedIn. And it's a lot what we're doing right now, right? It's a lot about real life, engaging, sharing. And unfortunately, I don't know what happens, but people get on LinkedIn and they like, they, they, they forget how to do things right. Not you all, not you all, but maybe some of your employees and certainly everybody else. And so I want to make sure that we, uh, we cover some cool strategies. I'm going to show you three strategies, one piece of uh, well, software slash Chrome extension um, that will make your life easier. And so hopefully you'll get a lot out of this presentation. But I want to start out with a poll. It's kind of a soft poll. Just let me know in chat, one, two, three, or four. What is the hardest part of the sales cycle for you? Whether you do sales yourself in your company or whether you've got a sales team and what are their complaints? Is it getting that first conversation? Is that the hardest part of sales for you? Is it qualifying the opportunity? Is it presenting a solution? Because solution-based sales always or is it closing the deal? So let me know in chat, one, two, three, or four. First conversation, first conversation, first conversation, first conversation. First. Okay, one, four, excellent. 
One, two, a one and a four. All right. Yeah, it's 69% of the people that we polled said it was getting to that first conversation, which was the hardest thing to do. And that is definitely uh, reflected in the answers in chat. Now, I love, Jason, that you said qualifying, <laughs> yeah, determining if they're insane or not. Oh, man, if we had an hour, we could just go on you know, a story of our un insane, unsane clients that we've dealt with or prospects that we've dealt with. But that's that's probably for another time. That being said, one of the things that I'm going to show you today is how to better qualify and find those quality uh, leads on LinkedIn. But the number one thing, just like in chat, is is just getting that first conversation. So that is what we found. And and, and monkeys, <laughs> getting first conversation and monkeys, um, getting that first conversation. And, you know, so what I want to talk about is a little bit what people are doing wrong on LinkedIn, what to do right, how to, how to make that outreach meaningful. And it all comes down to my friend, Bob Berg, all things being equal, business, people do business and refer business to people they know, like, and trust. And, and LinkedIn just seems to have forgotten about that like and trust piece, right? And so um, we're gonna deep dive in some strategies around that. And probably why the reason that you're here today is we know with the pandemic, we've got to get virtual selling down. We've got to get social selling down. If, if you or your company is not finding some way of engaging virtually with your audience, you're in trouble. Like, and, and, and thankfully, Vendasta has a lot of tools that helps with that, right? Um, the other thing is 90% of decision makers never answer a cold call. Let me know. There's always one weirdo. Um, let me know in chat. Uh, who is my one weirdo who loves doing cold calls? There's always one weirdo, right? Even if you are that weirdo, all right, it's Sean, I love it. Even if you are that weirdo who loves doing cold calls, um, some of what I'm gonna show you how, what to do today is will help you warm them up so that they're not so cold and you have a better closing rate and then everybody is happy. Um, and yeah, I don't even like owning a phone. And isn't it funny, like most people, especially our younger employees, they forget that this is more than a camera. Like you can actually talk to people. I'm mean, just throwing it out there. Crazy idea, but you can actually talk to people on that. Um, the other thing to be aware of, of course, is 75% of B2B buyers are making their, their buying decisions and they're, they're on social, right? They're on Facebook, they're on Instagram, they're even on LinkedIn. And so we want to make sure that our content is what's out there and catching their eyes. So I'm going to address all of this in the next 30 minutes. We're going to talk about how to find those right prospects on LinkedIn. I'm gonna show you two little ninja things, which hopefully um, you know about, but if you don't, even better. And we'll try to get some audience participation with that. I wanna show you our PVC methodology, which is more about pipeline than piping. And we'll talk about why that's important. And then I'm gonna introduce you to Fly Message. Hopefully you all get access. And if we have time, you can ask me anything, I mean, about LinkedIn. So most of us, just looking at y'all earlier, most of you are, you know, around my age, maybe a little bit younger, maybe a little bit older, but we came into business, our own businesses, whether we're selling or whether we're, you know, business owners, but as far as getting our name out there, getting to those first conversations, yeah, we did the cold calling, right? the email blasting, we attended networking events. Um, asking for a referral is always a great thing to do, uh, but there's better ways of doing it using some of the tools that we have out there. So these are the things that we used to do. And then, you know, the internet came along and then we found other ways of using things like LinkedIn and other social networks. Um, and then the pandemic hit, and then we had to use things like LinkedIn and other social networks. And, and now we're starting to break out a little bit, right? There's still you know, networking events are starting to open up, conferences are starting again, trade shows are starting again, but it's almost always a hybrid model. 
And I don't know, I don't know if it'll ever go back to the way things were. So we need to learn how to do things differently, right? Texting, that's one of the great things with our phones. People won't answer a phone call, but they'll probably read a text. Now, spammy texts, that's not gonna help. Spammy voicemails, that's not gonna help, but we have a solution for that in our PVC methodology, which we'll talk about very shortly. Social networks, which I already talked about. Sales video, I'm not gonna get into that today, um, but being able to send a video with your face, with your voice, with, you know, animated, it gives people a sense of who you are. And because we have been separated from our prospects and separated from our clients with the pandemic, things like video can get people to feel like they know, like, and trust us, even if they don't. Um, digital referrals, referrals are great. LinkedIn, I love the fact that you can see who you have in common. So again, I'm gonna show you a little strategy around that coming up here shortly. Inbound, I mean, I love a good inbound lead. Now, to Sean's part, point, sometimes they're cuckoo pants, but uh, <laughs> being able to share and disseminate content that attracts the right buyers right to you, that inbound marketing, that's, that's a game changer um, and it keeps getting tweaked and it keeps getting better. And then there's other tools like direct mail, gift marketing, things like that. But today I want to talk a little bit more about digital referrals um, and then obviously LinkedIn. So let me know in chat, one, two, three, or four, or <laughs> how active are you on LinkedIn? Not at all. I jump in a few times a week. I'm a daily user. I live on LinkedIn. A few times a week, a few times a week. Daily users, got my daily users there. Two and a half, I love it. It's always the outlier. All right, one to two, perfect. Um, and a couple threes. So what I'm gonna show you, you may know, you may not know, um, but hopefully it will, you'll find it valuable. And then hopefully it'll get you engaging on LinkedIn, maybe just a little bit more um, because you're starting to get results. Usually people don't make use of tools because they're not getting results. You're not getting results because maybe you're not doing the right thing and that's not your fault because probably no one taught you the right way. And I love it, Tyler. Daily uh, private messages, I love it. Nurturing the conversation with my avatar. So that is, that is absolutely perfect. Tyler, maybe we can co-teach a, co -teach a, a content marketing uh, on LinkedIn course at another time, because that's exactly what you want to do. All right, so let's back up a little bit. When it comes to LinkedIn, we have, um, basically, we walk people through six phases. Now, when we're working with sales teams, the first thing is like get their mindset right. If your sales team or if you or your employees don't have the right mindset there they think that linkedin is just a waste of time there's just a spam, bunch of spammers on there guess what you're not going to use it it's not going to work so we got to get the mindset right i'm going to assume since you're on this call you're at least open to the opportunity that linkedin might be a usable tool the second thing is branding and again i can do a whole and i think the last uh the, the last webinar we did together was a little bit more brand focused so you can go back and look at that one. But you have to create that good brand. So when people, in fact, go to your profile, look at you, it's, you're not costing yourself business, right? You're not costing your credibility. You're building your credibility. So that's the second thing we talk about. Now, the third thing we talk about is learning how to find and engage with the right prospects. Most people go from, I need to be linked on LinkedIn to start starting to connect to people. And that, unfortunately, is not the right way of doing it. You've got to build your brand so you don't turn people off. And then you've got to start engaging with them first, just like you would in real life. You've got to nurture those relationships. And unfortunately, I mean, if you went in, let's just do it right now, shall we? Go ahead. If you're, if you're well, you are obviously in front of your computers. Um, go ahead and like alt tab over, open up Chrome, if you would, because I'm going to share a Chrome tool with you shortly. But go ahead and open up Chrome, go into LinkedIn. Let's pop into LinkedIn right now. Let's just go ahead and take a look at the people inviting you to connect. 
All right, Patrick, absolutely, I'm gonna connect with you. Awesome, Mitchell. Okay, 100%, I'm gonna connect with you. But a lot of times, what you're gonna get is people reaching out with a sales pitch or reaching out with no customization at all. Now, if you reached out to me today without customizing it, it's okay, because we haven't talked about it. But as I look at this, it's pretty easy to see who the real people are. And of course, Patrick and Mitch, I'm gonna accept your invitation. And then who the people who you know the next second that I accept that invitation is gonna be a sales pitch, right? Because everyone goes right from, you need to be on LinkedIn to, oh, let me go see who I can find. And then I'll invite them to connect. And then I'm gonna automatically put them into my newsletter list without my permission, of course, or without their permission. And I'm gonna start spamming them with messages on LinkedIn. Oops, there we go. Let's not be those people. So we really talk about let's find the right people and learn to engage with them. So that is what the next 22 minutes is going to be all about. Now, when it comes to LinkedIn, who has a free account? Do free or paid in, in chat? Free or paid? Free or sales nav? Free, 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 be free, 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 previously paid. Yeah, a lot of times. Sales and have, all right, my dude. Lloyd, all right, cool. Steven, excellent. All right, free, free, paid, mostly free. The problem with free is, and you probably come up against this, you're doing your searches on LinkedIn, you're trying to find those right leads, and about one week, two week, three weeks, depending on how active you are on LinkedIn, LinkedIn goes, whoa, looks like you're trying to use this for business. And you're like, well, not doing it to, you know, find something cool recipes like yeah of course I'm using LinkedIn for business and then they want you to pay for it so one of the things that you can do to kind of push off that hey you want to pay for us is use LinkedIn's filters to find those more qualified pe people and there's just a few things that you can do immediately so if you can open up your screen or if you've got two screens you can look at me and still open up zoom go ahead and do that when you go into search, you know, if I was going to search for CEOs up here, there's going to be like, you know, 80 billion. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration. There's going to be 80, maybe 800 million or 80 million, or I can't remember how many. Let's see. Let me, I won't even guess. CEOs, 7 million. Okay, so there are 7 million CEOs on LinkedIn. Awesome. That is unusable, right? <laughs> Obviously, I can't do anything with 7 million. I don't know what kind of companies they work at. I don't even know if they're in the US. I don't, in many cases, have any way of engaging with them. So that is a completely useless search. So don't do that. Don't use this basic search bar. What you always want to do is go to people and then all filters. So you're going to start people, all filters. So here's ninja trick number one. Sort just by first and second levels. If you sort by first and second levels, you know that they're either connected to you or you can ask them to introduce you to somebody, right? The digital referral. So that's number one, always sort by first and second. If, you're, if your results are too limited, fine, go and sort by everybody. But at first, just sort by first and second, especially for those of you who have free accounts, because you're going to get more results for longer before LinkedIn throws up the wall. Obviously, you're then going to do things like sort by your geography, especially if you only work in the US or you only have clients in California or whatever. So you always want to sort by locations, obviously. If you've got named accounts or if your sales team has named accounts, add them here. Um, and then the other thing is if you focus on a particular industry, obviously, add that here. Now here's ninja trick number two, like this stuff's pretty obvious, right? The um, ninja trick number one, first or second, narrows it down. Those are the people you can easily engage with. Ninja trick number three is something called um, Boolean logic. It's the use of and, or, or not. I don't have a whole hour to go into it. So let's just, today we're going to use the word or. <laughs> and that's because we don't know if our client is a CEO or are they a president or are they a founder, right? 
So let's do some let's do some real searches here. We've restricted, yeah, we've restricted your account temporarily. That's another one that comes up. That's usually when you invite too many people without customizing the invitation. And then too many people say, I don't know that person. And then LinkedIn goes ahead and restricts your, your, uh, your account. Awesome, thanks LinkedIn. Um, so give me the name of, uh, or the title, give me the title of your buyer persona. Who are your clients? Who do you work with? Like, are they business owners, CEOs? Okay, that was easy. CMOs. Uh, CMOs, great. So I've got CEO and then you wanna capitalize or, that way LinkedIn knows it's looking for a CEO or a CMO. They're not looking literally for the word or. So CEO, CMO, great, or CFOs. And we got a lot of the same. President. President, exactly, perfect. So once you start to use the or, it really, um, it, well, the or actually expands your search, but at least you're getting the right people. So once you've done that, we've gone from 7 million people, 7 million people uh, down to 7,200, which is still too many people, but at least it's not 7 million people. So now I'm just gonna go back into my filters and narrow it down a little bit more. Maybe I wanna focus on a particular industry. Uh, maybe I want to look at a particular service category or maybe a, a specific location. So for us, we work with, uh, let's just go in here and we'll put a little IT in there. Um, I'm just actually gonna expand my search a bit, but what are some, what are some, um, what are some geographies that you all work within? Like more narrow geographies. Boston. All right, perfect. I'm going to go ahead. Let's find a search for Colleen in Boston, one of my favorite cities, although not right now. Cool. And so you could go in, uh, Stephen, with Detroit. You could go in, uh, Donald, with Burlington, Vermont. Oh, I was, I was just there. Uh, Kylan, you could go with Atlanta. Exactly. So now we can narrow down to our specific geographies. This is 100% usable. So I went from 7 million people to 7,000 people to, okay, 116 results. That is 100% usable. Whew. And now it's really cool because LinkedIn, most of these folks are second level connections. If I had any first level connections, I could just shoot them a message. And a lot of times what you'll find out is that you're already connected to leads and you just didn't even remember it. They invited you or you invited them ages ago, totally spaced it, forgot about it. And there they are. And now you can just send them a message. In the case of a second level connection, however, now we have an opportunity for what we call our, our two-step introduction. So I'm gonna give you the outline basically of what you need to do and then um, I can actually uh, find and throw a link at you uh, later in a follow-up. So I'm going to go down here. I'm going to go find my um, ideal leads. So let's just say that David is an ideal lead. Now, I'm, the one nice thing is David's uh, the, little, the little gold ins mean he's paying for LinkedIn. And it probably means I could message him directly if I wanted to. So that's a little, if you didn't know that, that's what that little gold means. He's a premium member. He probably has open link turned on. I can message him directly, but I'm not going to because I haven't earned the right yet. And that's a big differentiator. Most people reach out to you before they've earned the right. Now, obviously for anyone who invited me, who's on the show, you've earned the right. You're in my audience. You've 100% earned the right. Yes, we're going to connect. But if I'm just coming at you out of the blue, I haven't earned the right yet to, to message David, even though I can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to David's profile. And the first thing I'm gonna do is see who we have in common. And it turns out we have 24 people in common. Now his connections are not visible, but the common ones are. So nor, sometimes you can go into someone and see all of their connections. It's blue, uh, if, if, if you could do that. But at least I can see that David and I have 24 mutual connections. Now, here's where most people drop the ball. They go, hey, 
Andy, I noticed that you're connected to a lot of CEOs. Could you introduce me to some? Like, and now all of a sudden I put all the workload on Andy. Do you ever, do you do, um, oh, uh, I make my connections visible. It really is a personal matter um, and how connected you are currently to your competitors um, because your competitors can then see your connections and, and kind of ascertain who your clients are. So um, if you're really connected to your, if you, if you know you're connected to your competitors, then meh, maybe you want to turn it off. Um, I don't care. <laughs> I figure there's enough work out there for everybody. So I leave mine on, but uh, for, for some people, they much prefer to leave it off. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It really just depends on, on you and your comfort level. So good question. So rather than saying, hey, Andy, can you introduce me to some CEOs? Um, I'm not going to do that because that's putting the work on Andy's shoulders. And even though he's a really nice guy, eh, he might not be willing to do that. But you know, probably I could say, hey, Andy, I noticed you're connected to David. Would you be willing to introduce me? Now, that's the one step introduction, and that works okay. But here's the magic ninja trick, right? Multiple, you ask multiple people if they're willing to introduce you, and that's it, right? So you're like, hey, Zachary. Um, I noticed you're connected to David Goal. If you feel comfortable doing so, if you feel like you know him or me well enough, are you willing to do an introduction? Just let me know yes or no. And then I go, hey, Andy, I noticed you're connected to David Goal. You do these in separate messages. Don't do this in a group message. Hey, Andy, I noticed that you're connected with David Goal. If you feel comfortable enough, either with me or with him, would you mind introducing us? Just give me a yes or a no. And I go down my list and I ask, three, four, five people who I feel comfortable enough that they know me well enough. And then it's just, do they actually know him well enough? So I'm probably gonna ask Zach, Andy, uh, Coca, um, and maybe Nancy. Cause I actually know these people. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know everybody on LinkedIn. So I actually know these people. Now, Zach's busy. He hasn't talked to me in ages, maybe. Um, Andy, uh, Andy's a competitor and he's like, oh no, I wanna do work with Mark. But Nancy says, sure, I'd be happy to. And Coca says, sure, I'd be happy to. Now I have to choose. I'm not gonna ask both Nancy and Coca to actually send the introduction. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose. I'll choose Nancy because she's at the top. So now I'm gonna say, thanks so much, Nancy. I wrote this introduction for you. Make it easy on Nancy. Please feel free to customize it however you want. And when you send it, will you CC me? And that is key. Because when Nancy sends the introduction, which I've written for her, so it's easy peasy, and she CCs me on it, now I can directly engage with David. I haven't quite earned the right, but it's kind of close enough because we have that one person in common. And to Coca, I'm going to say thanks so much. You know, a friend of mine actually ended up introducing me to David, but you know, how are you? How are the kids? How's the new job going? Right? <laughs> so it gives me an opportunity to have a conversation with Coca too. But mainly I'm asking all the people I feel I well, know well enough to introduce me, choosing the ones who are willing to do it, that's the first part. And then the second part is I'm writing the introduction for them that makes it easier. And then they're going ahead and they're CCing me on it. And if you do that, we have clients who have a hundred percent success rate with, the, with their ability to actually connect with the individual. Now, what you say next, Hang on to your hats. We're gonna cover that in just a second. But this two-step methodology of digital referral works really, really powerful. But like all things LinkedIn, if you don't know the intricacies, that little bit of asking many, choosing a few, and then, or, and then choosing the, the one, the best yes, and then writing the introduction and then getting CC'd on the introduction, that's the little tweak that makes it that makes it work all the time, JD. How often do they tell you they don't really know the person well enough? All the time, and that's fine. That's why we have one, two, three, four, five, six different options, right? That's why I'm not because if I just asked Nancy and she said I don't really feel like I know David well enough, okay, 
I guess they won't connect to me, but <laughs> no, this way I know that's okay. Cause now maybe Andy does. Cause yeah, a lot of times people are not gonna know them especially if they used to be an open networker back in the day. So yeah, that is, that is a great question. And then I think uh, De Devin, you asked a question Oh my gosh. Yeah. So what is the ratio of people who actually know decision makers um, or as compared to everybody who just like accept any connection request? That is another <laughs> conversation for another day. Um, yeah, there back in the day, right? There were Alliance LinkedIn open networkers or still LinkedIn open networkers. They don't really know their connections. Um, as a speaker, I connect to just about anyone who says, oh, I saw you, you know, I, I, I saw you speak. Um, but then when we don't follow up on the relationships, even though we're, we're connected, I, I'm probably connected to a lot of people that I don't feel that I know well enough. Um, so yeah, there's probably a lot of people in your network who you're connected to who aren't maybe the decision makers. But that's why we have different options for that very reason. It's not perfect, but it's a, it's a little bit more transparent than just like throwing darts at the board, right? <laughs> Which is unfortunately how most people use LinkedIn. Let me show you one more feature within this. So let me, uh, let me reset all my filters. This one's really cool and is now available on Sales Nav. Um, a, a three or four of you had Sales Navigator. So that search I just did, you can literally start it in LinkedIn and pop over into Sales Navigator or do the whole thing in Sales Navigator completely up to you. This next feature um, wasn't available on SalesNav for the longest time. It was only available on LinkedIn, which made no sense, but now it's available on SalesNav too. So just so you know, it is the add the connections up. So you probably know someone who's like a super connector, right? This person is connected to everybody. They, uh, my friend, Jessica Peterson in Florida, in fact, probably, some of you know her. I mean, that is how connected she is, right? My friend, Alice Hyman in the sales world, super connected. So the other cool thing to do is when you come in here into this search and you sort by all filters, you can come in, you need to be first level connections with them. And literally you can put their name in. Oops. Oh, alive. <laughs> That's her new nickname. Look, she even turns up first under Alice. So you can put that super connectors name in and I can do the same. Okay, so who do I know who knows Alice um, in the US who is a, you know, a CEO or a president, et cetera, et cetera. And what's nice about this is when I get my results, I know that Alice is going to be able to introduce me to these individuals. So I can then sort my results location, industry, et cetera. And I know that Alice is gonna be able to introduce me to all of these people. Now I'm not going to go, hey, Alice, I see you have 287 people you could help me get connected with. That wouldn't be a very nice thing to do. But you know, in a pinch, I can absolutely say, hey, Alice, I know you're connected with Keith Moore. Um, he's speaking at an event that I'm gonna be speaking at and I would love a warm introduction. Are you willing to do that? Yes or no? And then I'll, you know, write the introduction, have her CC me on it. But that little connections is great. Yes, Lloyd uses it already. How to connect with heads of chambers of commerce and business people. I love it. Yeah, because they absolutely know how to do that. You ask if we have an email intro request template. Um, yes and yes. Let me show you that now because that is the perfect introduction to what's next which is our pvc methodology now we already talked about our inbox chances are if you if you jumped into your actual inbox right now if you haven't cleaned it out it's like spam 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 well that's not spam uh <laughs> spam spam not spam all right so very 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 spammy um, except for what just popped up, that wasn't spam, that was you guys, thank you. And we will connect. There's duh, just duh, pet peeve. All right, so because that is my biggest pet peeve, people getting on LinkedIn and trying to sell their crap, um, we developed what we call the PVC methodology. You can use this 
to create an introduction. You can use this to create a, uh, a referral request. You can use this to write a post, PVC, and it stands for personalize, add value, and a call to action. Now personalize, even in posts, right? Even when I'm writing a post to my audience on LinkedIn, I'm gonna personalize it at least to a buyer persona. For us, it's B2B sales leaders. So I'm gonna be like, hey, B2B sales leaders, are you frustrated by your inability to actually you know, create those initial conversations on LinkedIn? No problem, we have the solution. So number two, we go into the value. Now my solution isn't, we have the solution by our modern sales mastery program, no. We have the solution. Here's a really cool two-step methodology. You might want to, two-step introduction methodology. You might want to try out, check out the video below. That's my call to action, check out the video below. So that's if I'm sending a post. But if I'm going to personalize an invitation, right? Hey, Tim. So personalized to Tim. I saw that you were on the webinar today. There we go. Identifying, you know, I know who you are, you know who I am. I talked about the two-step methodology. Now let me share a link to it. Now I'm adding value. If you want to connect, you know, just hit the accept button or you can always just hit reply and ask any questions you have. That's my call to action. So we always want to personalize, address a point of pain, share something of value, not necessarily our product or our service yet. Eventually you get to that. But re remember, you've got to earn the right. People go right in, right in for the sales pitch. Um, I like to say, buy me a drink first, get to know me first, and then you can pitch me. But just, just back off, dude, right? And then the call to action is not like, let's set up a meeting um, unless the timing is right. It's read the article, let me know what you think. So you're asking about a template. Yes, we have that template and many more and I'll show you how to get it in just a second. And oh yeah, it's free. So this is basically the anatomy of a PVC message. Hey, first name, the majority of you know, sales leaders like you, CEOs like you, CMOs like you, CFOs like you have these common problems. Problem one, problem two. Attached to this email are two items that have helped your peers address these problems. Blog post one, video two, infographic one, case study two, right? You probably have content already on your blog, hopefully, or your podcast, or your YouTube channel that addresses the issues that your buyers have. Like, if you don't, I'm sure there's someone on this call that can help you. And then you can either say, you know, let me know what you think about said article, webinar, white paper, blah, blah, blah. And if you have any questions, I've thrown in my calendar link below, or I'm available at these times below. You're not necessarily asking for the meeting this time, but you are making yourself available until in, in, in case they have questions. So for this template, and I'm gonna send you this link too, which has a lot of our templates in it. So I'll, I'll grab that link and, and send it to you in just a second. I'll pop it into chat. But in order to get this template and others, I want to introduce you to Fly Message. Who currently, yeah, gotta have a date first. Exactly, David. Um, who here uses an auto text expander tool? I promise this will make sense in just a second. Who here uses an auto text expander tool? You type in a few characters and okay, good. JD all the time. Alex, yes. Ryan, yes. For Zoom links, calendar links, JD, boom, you're my kind of person. That's exactly right. That's how I use it too. Giovanni does, excellent. Tim does, perfect. Let me introduce you to the best auto text expander out there, which is free. Okay, yes. And the iPhone does, in, in fact, have that functionality built into it. And I think Android does too now. It used to be you had to have a, a, a tool for that. But um, yeah, iPhone, you can just do the text replacement. Exactly. So what we did um, at Vengresso, 
we had like books and books and books of templates. And then we would make our, you know, we would make our clients go into their templates and customize the templates. So then it suited them. We'd make it, then we'd make them copy and paste it into a um, auto text expander app. And then we'd make them come up with short, short codes and then we'd make them practice it. And it was all very time consuming. We thought, what if we could like get rid of one of those steps and just put our templates right into an auto text expander tool that we owned then it's just like one step. They just have to customize it. Now they can use it. So we created Fly Message for our clients. But then we're like, well, you know, we've created it for our clients and so we might as well open it up to the world. So that's what we did. So what I would invite you to do, and let me, uh, let me pop this. I was just going to send it to Tim, but I guess I'll just go ahead and send it to everyone. Um, if you are in Chrome, in Chrome, if you are in Chrome, you can go to, oh, for goodness sake, not flimsy. Every time it wants to say flimsy, fly MSG. I mean, I, I like spell check, but that's annoying. Okay, there we go. Um, you can go to flymessage.io or I'll put the real link in there for you, which is here. Nope, that's actually my fly message, which is here. And what you'll notice is, there we go. What you'll notice is when you download, it's a Chrome, not download. I'm, I, my, they're always saying, stop saying download. It's a Chrome extension. Download is scary. This is a Chrome extension. When you add the Chrome extension to Chrome, what you'll notice is, boom, we've got what we call um, the flyboard. That's going to walk you through. We're not going to spend the time right now, but that's going to actually walk you through how to use Fly Message. And then underneath that is our fly plates. So the two-step referral, the cold calling, e the cold template I just showed you, um, how to send a message if your key cust to your key customer's contact manager, how to invite someone to uh, speak or invite someone to connect if you saw them speak, um, what to say when someone's viewed your profile, how to invite them to connect when they viewed your profile. And then everything, uh, you know, everything that JD was talking about, dates, links, um, all, you know, we've got just a ton of templates in here that you can use. I'm, I'll show you very quickly, but basically what you're going to do, find a template that you want to use. That's a dumb one. Let's come back up here. <laughs> find a template that you want to use. And then all you're going to do is click on add to fly cut, bleh, add to fly cuts. And then over here on the left hand side, this is where all your fly cuts live. Now you can, of course, create your own and we would invite you to create your own. Um, but you can see I've got versions of my bio because another nice thing about fly message is you can have images, hyperlinks you know, all of that good stuff. So whenever anyone asks me for my bio, I'm like, sure, no problem. The pick bio, <laughs> there it all is. Um, so, you know, thinking a little bit outside the box links, I can never remember the links, right? But now I can just type in 101 book. In fact, let me just do it. 101 book. It doesn't work in Zoom, turns out. All right, well, I'll just copy and paste it then. <laughs> what a waste. But um, I want to get you a copy of my book too. So I'm going to pop that in there. This PDF version, everyone can get it for free. Uh, but anywhere but on Zoom, um, when I type in 101 book, there we go. There's my link. Our address, I can never remember. I know we're in Walnut Creek somewhere. We're a fully virtual company. We're all over the world. I can never remember our address. I type in then add. <laughs> There's our address, like silly little things like that. Now, obviously where I use it the most is responding to people who've invited me to connect, right? So you will get, I'll be using it on you today too. You're gonna be getting, um, you're gonna be getting a response because you saw me speak. So I've crafted a, a response for people who've seen me speak. I've crafted a response for people who I don't wanna connect with but I do want to respond to them just in case, right? I won't connect, but even though you're not connecting, you can still send someone a message even if you haven't connected. So that one's a video, no fly reply. So I've got a ton of these already built in, right? Now these are ones that I've customized, but I don't have to go searching for it. I don't have to copy and paste. I literally just have to type in the fly client. So this is the one you're probably 
going to see today some version of this V fly client and it's done. But the power of this is it saves you an enormous amount of time, number one, but also we've got the PVC built right into our templates. So you asked about templates. Yes, yes, we are going to give you templates as well. Um, so I know I am running long because I always run long, but are there any questions I missed? I was keeping kind of half an eye. Um, oh, what is the difference if you sign up to, it doesn't matter. You can, <laughs> whatever. Um, it fly message works, whether you sign up with using your Google, whether you sign up using LinkedIn. Yeah, however you wanna sign up to fly message uh, when you come over here and sign up, it's, it's fine. If you've already, if you use Chrome a lot, and you have a particular Gmail address that you use with Chrome, use that. But honestly, it doesn't much matter. And oh, one other cool thing that we are doing, let me see if it's actually working yet. I right click. Yes, so um, now we are doing uh, a, a functionality where you can right click and you can pull your messages right in um, from our, our fly message dashboard just with a right click wherever you are. So. You can open up fly wherever you are, which saves a little bit of time too. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. Any questions? I know we're late. Questions, everyone. Um, <laughs> drop them in the chat. Normally I ask you guys to unmute, but let's drop them in the chat today. Um, Chris T, only Chrome, Firefox? Okay, yeah, only Chrome right now. Um, we are actually in uh, funding rounds. So as soon as we get more funding, yeah, we're gonna be opening it up to Firefox. Remember, we were just doing for this client. So we're just being nice offering it to everybody. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, we're going to be, it, there'll be Firefox, there'll be Edge, um, there'll be an app, definitely an Apple app, probably an Android app. No, we'll have apps. But right now it is only a Chrome extension. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Steven asks, any advice on avoiding LinkedIn police for automation? Yeah, don't automate. Um, and so my message isn't really automation. Yeah, that is the problem. Um, and I used to automate because it's easier, right? The problem with automation is inevitably it breaks and then you get a dear name, like literally an A-N-E, mm. um, and that can really hurt your credibility, number one. Uh, I actually, we had a client who worked with us because they had, they had hired a company that did LinkedIn lead gen. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> just through automation and and there are i'm sure there are people who do linkedin lead gen through automation really really well and if that's you i'm sorry if i just insulted you but most companies out there they don't care if they screw up your reputation right they want their thousand dollars a month or their five hundred dollars a month and if it if it if it locks up your profile or 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 kills your profile linkedin kicks you off um, or hurts your reputation they don't care i mean mm -hmm. i literally I wish I was kidding. Dear sir, we, I noticed you were in the, I'm trying to remember, I noticed you're in the office cleaning supply business. If you want leads like this, you know, let's connect. Like not a sir, not in office <laughs> cleaning supply. No, I don't want leads like this. Report and block. Like, oi. And, and they don't care, right? They're just, they just want to make life easy. So my short answer to automation is, is don't do it. If you are going to automate, please vet the automation tool that you're using. Um, and then I would probably, I mean, if you can use an incognito or a VPN or something, um, but I would just, yeah, my, my word of advice is don't do it. I've gotten the, I've gotten the DM. Um, Hi, we, we can help you build your website. And I was like, we actually offer okay. to build websites, but um Thanks. Uh, Kate Lloyd asks, what are your thoughts on programs like Paulo and Synovio? Am I Synovio. saying that right? And you're going to have to remind me what they do because the names are familiar, but honestly, I can't remember what the tools do because, you know, we Lloyd, do you want to unmute? Yeah, go ahead and unmute. Um, they help with, in case the, some of the contacts that people you reach out to may not have put their email information yes. in. I like to sometimes grab the email and do uh, an email outreach before uh, yeah. doing a LinkedIn outreach. I might try to digitally surround them first, do a follow, uh, do a like, but outreach through your email. And then after a few touches or a few connections, then try uh, um, connecting on LinkedIn. 
Yeah, you, you, so yes. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. And thank you for the reminder. Actually, we've got our cadence, which is very similar to what you just said um, in this article, which I just popped into chat. Um, because yeah, you, that, that's 100%. I for, um, our sales team uses outreach.io and maybe salesloft to get that information. But yeah, 100%. I, I'm fine with that personally. The LinkedIn has some issues with it, but um, most of those companies that have been around for a while have figured out how to work, work that. Um, and yeah, you don't, you know, our LinkedIn, like even here, you can see, um, that's inbound. We've got an outbound one here too somewhere. Uh, but you'll see that our cadence isn't, you know, you're not going to reach out to someone first on LinkedIn. You're going you're gonna to try and warm up that inbound, outbound. There it is. You're going to try and warm up that relationship first with the referral request that I was talking about, the social engagement, the social surround. We call it the same thing, just what you were talking about. Follow them on LinkedIn, then email, then you send a video email, then you call them and leave a voicemail. You can use PVC, right, for all of these personalized value call to action. Then you send the connection request number seven. So this is, this is what our sales team does. So 100% you are you are 100% on, on, on task there. Um, and I'm fine with using tools like that because we do. Uh, Steven says, and you do that without uh, automation at all. We do, we do, I know it's a lot, it's a lot, but um, we, you know, we use HubSpot that keeps track of everything. We are all about, our CEO is all about data, 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 data. I mean, he wants mm -hmm. to know that everything that we're doing is, is, is got ROI and yeah, we, we do. 100% cool. manual. Devin says, my LinkedIn has been optimized for my career in web development. Nice. Do you have tools tash, slash tips for making it work better for finding agency leads? Oh, that's good. Um, I would say, you know, you could do a little tweaking here and there on your profile. Like you can, it's nothing's one and done, right? So um, for instance, right now I'm trying to remember, yeah, I think we're, 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 focused right now on um, promoting fly message because of the oops, fly message because of the um, because of the funding round. So we're, you know, it's, it's very fly messagey. There's, there's fly, we messaged, I, I mentioned fly message a lot throughout my profile, um, but I can change that up, right? I can go back into modern sales mastery. So number one, do like a campaign. So you might do a month long campaign where your background image um, your, your headline at least pulls in a little bit um, of uh, agency focus. Certainly the content that you share, right? You start actively sharing content that focuses on your agencies. And then again, this is a whole other, this is a whole other thing that we could go do another hour on. But one of the cool things, once you start sharing content, and I haven't shared content for four days, so I'm like, <laughs> don't, don't, okay. I mean, we, we use a, we use everyone's social, but um, my real content that I share, there's a big difference. You could see we go from 95, 50 views to like a hundred or, or to thousands of views when I actually share something manually. Um, but there's a wealth of, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, there's a wealth of information. There we go. Um, of people, actually, that's not one either. Do, 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 do. <laughs> there we go. This is one I, I shared manually. Um, so there's a wealth of opportunity in the engagement on your content. Um, another ninja trick, if you use polls, LinkedIn is mm. giving more algorithm juice to polls right now. Ask a poll where the answer you get leads to a conversation right? So, hey, are you an agency that needs blah, 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 but you're frustrated by blah, blah, blah. Cool. Let me know in the poll below, and then they'll let you know. And then in the comments, you might share a blog article that helps them out. Um, but the people who said yes, you can actually see them and respond to them. Hey, I noticed you answered yes on my poll. Thanks so much. Would love to connect on LinkedIn. I've got a free resource I would love to share with you that's going to help you out. Right? It's just an opportunity to start that initial conversation, but every single comment is an opportunity to engage. So one of the things that our sales force will do is they'll go to my profile, my content, or they'll go to Mario's content, the good stuff, the stuff we actually manually send out. And um, they'll see, okay, who's a, who's a good lead in here for us that, that you know, 
they'll say, hey, Vivica, can you introduce me to Graham? Like our salespeople will ask me if I'm willing to introduce them to Graham, if Graham's a good lead. And I'll be like, sure, why didn't I think of that, right? So um, there's, there's a lot of value in the people who engage with your content because of the KLT, the know, like, and trust. They already know you. They kind of like you a little bit if they're going to comment. <laughs> unless they're like, you suck, um, and then don't engage with them, right? And so that, <laughs> that builds up to the trust part, where if you do invite them to connect, they're more willing to do so. I went off on a tangent, sorry. <laughs> that is okay. Your tangents are great. Um, I had a few people ask me um, in the chat if this is recorded. You guys can see my community screen. Yes? No? No one's gonna, yes. Robert, can you see yeah. my screen? Yeah, okay. Um, under events here. Oh, what happened? <laughs> Guys, Sorry. every time I show you this, I swear. Let's just, so we go to events tab. There we go. <laughs> Past our like upcoming events. Um, Andrew's beautiful face, Jason, that you commented. Um, it'll be in here. And Brett will get that posted for you nice and quick. Um, we, so if you have, if you don't know, we actually had Vivica on the podcast too. So, um, Brett just shared her episodes inside of, um, the chat, uh, go listen. She's incredible. Thank you, Vivica, so much for coming today and sharing your wisdom with everyone. I think I can speak with everyone that this was awesome. Um, and actually how to make a great connect. So, Thank you and so I much. A two step referral. I popped a link to that. Perfect. So you can see that in chat. Just open it up now because it'll be gone in 10 seconds. Yes. I'll give you guys a couple Como. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and no monkeys have eaten her internet cable no yet. Monkeys. So it was there great. There was a huge grasshopper. A huge <gasps> grasshopper. It was so distracting. And I'm like, I know you want to come in and eat me, but I'm going to do this webinar first. I went to Costa Rica and there was a grasshopper. And I'm not joking, you yeah, guys. Like there's... it was like a foot long sub, like it is bleh, so gross. Anyways, um, thank you so much, Vivica. You're incredible. Thank you for coming and sharing your wisdom with everyone on the community session. Um, we appreciate you so much. Uh, it was my pleasure. I'm glad I could be here. <laughs> we did it. We did it. <laughs> okay, everyone have a great and uh, wonderful weekend. Stay safe and I'll see you next week.